Welcome to Unwired Learning. In this video, we're going to talk about the MOS capacitor. In particular, our goals for this video are to discuss the relationship between the MOS capacitor and a parallel plate capacitor, and ultimately what we want to know about is how charges form under the gate stack of the MOS capacitor. Over here on the left, we see a picture of the MOS capacitors with the gate stack. We have the metal layer, the oxide layer, and the semiconductor substrate. In this case, we've identified the semiconductor substrate as silicon and it's p-type doped. And we have labeled the length of the gate and the width of the gate, as well as the thickness of the oxide, which is labeled T sub ox. To better understand the MOS capacitor, it's helpful for us to first look at the parallel plate capacitor. So over here on the left, I've drawn two parallel plates separated by a distance D with an electric field E and a voltage applied across the two parallel plates. And when we have the voltage applied across the two parallel plates, what we see is a collection of charges, positive charges on the top plate and negative charges on the bottom plate, building up that are separated by the distance D, which is what gives rise to the electric field. There are a couple of things that we can calculate based on the parallel plate capacitor. The first is a capacitance. And in this case, we're going to define a capacitance per unit area. And because it's per unit area, I'm going to designate this capacitance as C prime. And C prime is equal to the permittivity of the material between the two parallel plates which might be air or might be some sort of dielectric or an oxide, an insulator, the permittivity of that material divided by the distance between the two plates. If we wanted to calculate the capacitance of the parallel plate capacitor, all we would have to do is take C prime and multiply it by the area, which would give us the capacitance of the device. The second thing that we can calculate is the magnitude of charge. In this case, we're also going to do the magnitude of charge as a per unit area. And because we're doing it as a per unit area, we'll call this Q prime. And Q prime will be equal to the capacitance per unit area C prime times the voltage applied across the two parallel plates. Now that we have this foundation about the parallel plate capacitor, let's move on and try to understand the MOS capacitor. So here again, we see the MOS capacitor, and we're gonna do the same thing with the MOS capacitor. We're going to try to define a capacitance per unit area and a magnitude of charge. And in this case, we're gonna find the magnitude of charge that is under the gate stack. We are particularly interested in this because this helps us to understand how charges move in a MOSFET across from the source and drain. The capacitance per unit area is a pretty simple translation from that of the parallel plate capacitor. In this case, we're gonna define the capacitance as C sub ox, and that C sub ox is equal to an epsilon, or the permittivity of the oxide, divided by the thickness of the oxide. And as you can see, that's very similar to what we had before. Moving on to the magnitude of charge, here's where we start to see a few differences between the parallel plate capacitor and the MOS capacitor. I'm going to write down the equation for the magnitude of charge, and then I'll explain each of the parts of the equation. The magnitude of charge Q is given as the value C ox times the width times the length, or the area of the gate stack, times the voltage across the gate stack. But in this case, this is where things are a little bit different we're gonna call this voltage the overvoltage, V sub OV. And you'll see why in just a few minutes. To understand why it is the overvoltage as opposed to the voltage from gate to body, as you might expect, we must first think about the fact that in the P-type semiconductor, there are positive charges floating around in that material. And because there are positive charges, when we apply a voltage across the gate to body, what we find is that we first have to sweep away those positive charges. And once we've swept those positive charges away, 
then we can start to accumulate negative charges that exist in that material under the gate stack. Because we have to overcome the positive charges that already existed in that material first, we have a threshold that we have to overcome, and therefore we can start to define what is this overvoltage idea. In this case, we'll say that the overvoltage is equal to the voltage from gate to body minus that threshold voltage I was just mentioning. One of the things to note about the overvoltage is the fact that I've used voltage gate to body as my first term. However, oftentimes you'll see it defined as voltage from gate to source minus the threshold voltage. The reason for this is that in most MOSFETs, the source and body are tied together. Now let's move on to a simple example where we calculate the capacitance of a MOS capacitor given a few pieces of information about that device. So here's our example. In this example, we are asked to find C sub ox, the capacitance of the oxide that is not a function of any dimensions of that device, and the actual capacitance given the dimensions of the device. We are given that the thickness of the oxide is 4 nanometers, the length is 0.18 micrometers, and the width is 0.72 micrometers. We're also given that the oxide is silicon dioxide. So how do we go about this? I think the first step would be to solve for the oxide permittivity. In this case, because it's silicon dioxide, we can look up and we can find that the relative permittivity of silicon dioxide is 3.9, and we must multiply that by the permittivity of free space, epsilon naught, where epsilon naught is given as 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per meter. And when we make this multiplication, we can find that epsilon ox is equal to 3.45 times 10 to the minus 11 farads per meter. Now that we have this, we can make another simple calculation to calculate the C ox value. C ox is epsilon ox over the thickness of the oxide. So in this case, we have 3.45 times 10 to the minus 11 farads per meter divided by the thickness of the oxide, which is given as 4 nanometers, or 4 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And when we perform this calculation, we find that the C ox value is 8.6 times 10 to the minus 3 farads per meter squared. We're almost there. We found one of the values that we wanted to find for this problem, but we need to find capacitance. And this is a simple calculation where we take the width and the length and we multiply it times the C ox. So C is equal to C ox times width times length, which is 8.6 times 10 to the minus 3 farads per meter squared, times the width, which is given as 0.72 micrometers, and the length, which is given as 0.18 micrometers. And when we perform this calculation, we will find that the capacitance is 1.1 times 10 to the minus 15 farads. 10 to the minus 15 is femto, and so we can write this as 1.1 femto farads. And that concludes this video of Unwired Learning.